Today's show topic is Who's the baby's daddy? Did, did you know he was married? Married? Uh, is he a dog? I mean, she need to stay with him. What a perspective. <laughs> that baby metrosexual. He got Beijing in the head, man. I ain't need that. You can't anymore. talk about a baby. At the uh, service for the kid Raven, the five-year-old that was shot. Also, we're praying for the 17-year-old who shot her. Because really, we may lose two kids. I just hope she alive. I grew up here and it's just getting worse and worse every day with the drug dealing and the guns and everything else. They need to do something about it. Yes, actually, I'm the CEO of Swag Nation. It's a youth advocate association. I'm so sick of crying. I'm devastated because I lost my house. I'm sick of all this boy. All I want to do is get away, get away. So tell me, what, Alexa, what bothers you and irritates you in school? Well, sometimes a lot of girls think they're better than you and when you're fussing with them, they'll consider you as white or cracker mm -hmm. and I really hate being discriminated like that because I know the color of my skin and that should not matter to nobody. People have been calling me black. They be saying I blend into the dark, the pavement. The without. young people wearing the pants down past the butt showing the underwear. How do you feel about that? Don't show what you don't have. Uh, David Simon wrote a story of based on Bodie's life. Do I? It's, it's well, extremely it entertaining. I enjoy myself. Okay. You know, and I'm the real guy. Well, we, right? We respect your life and your stories, and we, and we know that you're going to be one of the greatest directors. Sure. What uh, is life like being gay? I was always secure with myself. Never had a problem getting along with other people. Certain people that don't know me tend to get a little irritated when they see me come around. It's a shame to say that some church leaders aren't the upstanding citizens that we believe that they are. If you could find a professional, a teacher, a counselor, if you need to talk to somebody before you talk to your parents. I actually came okay? out with Go the closet after Ellen came out. <laughs> exactly. Please don't think you know that everybody that's gay wants you. It's never the same. Thank you. Well, uh, one of the things that made me turn it, God, recently my son was right. killed. And 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 I and I think there's a fear that exists between right. those yeah, generations should, yeah, that shouldn't yeah. be there. Like like the gentleman said, just because I come in and I have locks, you know, what I mean? and I'm refined. Don't get me wrong. I drink wine and smoke the finest cigars. Like I never uh -huh. smoke a, a marijuana blunt in my life. Mm -hmm. But you would never be able to tell that. If, yeah. if you never just took the time to just approach the cat. I was building my own kingdom, right. you know, and I uh, met that crack cocaine. And in seven years, I lost everything. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for that mm -hmm. because that, that those events allowed me to hit my proverbial rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And had I not hit that rock bottom with nowhere else to turn, I would have never met the one who could help me. I disrespect my wife. Mm -hmm. I was committing adultery for the last eight years. Six pack. 42 inch chest, 18 inch arms, and 36 thighs. Sound like me. Well, go ahead. <laughs> what and this book offers is testimony and trial. And God has to bring you sometimes in a place of brokenness. Yes, yes. You yes. know, brokenness so you can realize that God has a way of getting our attention. I am bisexual. Wow. Did mom um, know this? No, but she knows now. Hi, mom. Mom. <laughs> but, um, the state of Maryland has conspired with. Constellation Energy and BG and E to rip off working people. But what despite what anybody say, I will always be there for him. All and right, you. all right. That's a man. I love that's him. a man. Is this a uh, man and man and man and woman relationship? You are not a man? No. You're kidding me. Nope. This is a mind blower. I'm probably bisexual, I don't know. Um, now, you say you don't know, um, do, you, do you date guys? What? Yeah. And do you date girls? No. No, I haven't. Well, so you're confused. No, my parents want me to be a lesbian. Your parents want you to be a lesbian? Yeah. That's a new one. Why? Yeah, I know. They're like, then you won't have children, so that's good. Uh, Pigtown John Watch is a website where we, uh, put pictures of the vehicles and or the tag numbers of the vehicles that pick up the prostitutes. Being the lowest man on a total pole um, is just uh, should be an expression to use to help you strive to move forward and higher in your life. You know?
Hey, welcome to It's On Talk Show, and today's show topic is taboo. And I have some ladies here. Ladies, hello. Hello. How you doing? Wow, did you hear that? Sexy ladies. All right. Listen, and again, today's topic is taboo. And I'm going to first uh, allow, th allow the ladies to introduce themselves, and you are? I'm Tiffany Jackson. Um, I'm the CEO of Prism Entertainment. My name is January Perry. I'm Lee. I'm Jay. Lil Peasy. Jen. My name is Trené. Nicole Harrington. And I'm Rhonda. And I'm Johnny, your host. And today, my, my co-host is Tiffany. Tiffany, how you doing? All right, hey, Tiffany, and today we're going to have some fun here. Uh, could you tell the folks out in TV land uh, why this topic was chose taboo? Uh, taboo was chosen uh, pretty much in the community as a whole. Um, you know, in the gay and lesbian culture or community, um, there's a lot of taboo topics such as, you know, gay marriage, um, gay and lesbians adopting children, you know, and parenting and things as such. So we pretty much just wanted to come together and educate the community as a whole on how gay and lesbians contribute to the society, pretty much. Okay, so um, now today, one of the subtopics is about family. Um, how do you all feel about family? What's one of you uh, ladies' strong uh, points about fa family in the gay and lesbian community? Who would like to respond? Well, um, I'm big on family because uh, my parents, they've actually been married for 25 years, going on 26. All right. Well, actually 27 now this year. And um, I've always been raised, you know, with family. And it's very strong. I'm definitely strong in beliefs when it comes to that. All right. Anybody else? Um, I actually feel the same way. However, I didn't grow up with the family. Um, I, was a, I was raised in a single parent home. So family is very important to me because I didn't have it. And so I, I think that it's very necessary that my children have that um, because I suffered from it um, greatly. Really? Greatly. Sorry yes. to hear that. Anyone else? Um, does anyone or can anyone speak from the perspective of having a family or having children in a household and, you know, being in a lesbian community? I think the question in itself is crazy because we all – came somewhere I mean and I think that's the taboo problem with the community is that we didn't come from somewhere we all had families everybody came from a mother father whether they had been different two parents two women two men a man one woman we you know we're gay but we all have a family and most of us are raising families so I think the the question in itself is a taboo like we all love our family we all have sisters, brothers, a cousin, an aunt, a godmother. So um, the fact that our families are important, no matter what they are, they're all important. Whether we created them with our friends, um, we're just like, we have a family like everybody else. Okay, but then what about the situation with, with a fan in the gay, com uh, gay community, a lot of people don't believe that a gay couple should raise a child. How do you feel about that? Um, for lack of a better word, I think it's ignorant. Um, love comes from the heart. Yes. Uh, it doesn't matter what color you are. doesn't matter what your stature is. doesn't matter where you work. How would you respond to someone? Do you, do you have, are you in a gay relationship? I am in a gay relationship. And my, domes children? my domestic partner is on my insurance policy, right. um, my health insurance policy, right. and her daughter. Um, and we, we're buying a home together and all of that. So, you know, um, I just, I, I, you know, one of the things that I think is so important is God said, when you come to me, bring me your heart, not your garment, right, right. Uh, not your girlfriend, not your boyfriend, not your job. He said, bring me your heart. So it doesn't matter who I love. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I just really think that it's foolish that they make such a major deal out of it because, um, you know, but I, I say the country, but see, this is what's going on. People, uh, uh, even in the church community, think that you're a bad person because you're in a gay relationship with a child. And as as I've learned that, and and have found out that it's a beautiful thing. People, you, you're beautiful. You're a beautiful person. I'm sure your family is great. Mm -hmm. You follow me. Yes. And so, what's the problem with people? Why they, Why they, Why do they want to hate on you? I just told you ignorance. When you don't know, you have. You know, one of the things that 
people tend to do is they talk about things that they don't know. But I right. think it's very important that you educate yourself about things before you make comments about it. And although the word says that it's an abomination of God, I also know that man wrote word. Right, you right. Know, and that it has been twisted, for lack of a better word. What? So, um, in that... You know, I believe that people have the misperception that, you know, because we're gay, we're going to help. Or because we're gay, we don't matter. Or, you know, we're not good people. Or we're this or we're that. But, again, that goes right back to what I said before. Right. God said, bring me your heart. He did not say, That's bring right. me your, gar your girlfriend or your relationship. He said, bring me your heart. You know, one of, the, one of the reasons why I do this show, because I found out that God loves gay people just as love, just as he, just as, I just think as he much. As he loves you, anyone you, else. You think he made me this way? Do you think? Uh, I mean, he knew what my life was going to be before. Absolutely. My life was predestined. Yes, that's right. You know, right. it was already mapped out what, what I was. I'm also a recovering addict, and I don't mind sharing that. That's all right. Because I, I believe in hope. Mm -hmm. um, and I use drugs hard and long, you know. But I also know that just because I'm a, a recovering drug addict, that, that doesn't mean I'm going to hell either. But no. that's a sin as well, right or wrong. So, again, I say. It doesn't matter what it is that I do as long as I do it with him first and not self-will. Right, that's right, that's right. But God's will, you know, and he knew what my life was going to be before I did it. But see, most yeah. Christians need to know and understand that it doesn't matter if you're gay or not. God loves you just as much. And I'm just very proud to say and stand here today to say that I know God loves each and every one of you probably more than he loves me. Because, he, he, this, because this show, he allowed me to do this show to show the world and the community that just because a person is gay or lesbian doesn't, that doesn't mean that they are bad people. They're great people. Some of the greatest people I've ever met in my life, and I really mean that. And I, I see you have great values, great family values, and that's love. And that's, that's actually what Jesus represents, love. Mm -hmm. So that's real powerful because you just helped a lot of people to uh, have the notion now that just because you're gay doesn't mean that you're not a great Christian. Because, and as I said in church, there are many, many gay couples, and, you know, they really love God. They're faithful, you know. I mean, can anyone else respond to family? Can I say something? Sure, I sure, go ahead. I think, I think what people need to understand is there are a lot of things that are so-called sinful or that, you know, people aren't supposed to do as far as families are concerned. I mean, as long as there are two people or one person, whoever, whoever in the home that's caring for that child or those children or, you know, nieces and nephews or whatever, that's all that matters. I right. don't really think that, I mean, people, you, if you take into consideration the divorce rate and that they're single parents and that they're two parents in a home who are crack addicts oh, and some more stuff, you know what I mean? I yeah. mean, I, I really don't think that being a lesbian or being gay is that big of an issue when you take all of those things into consideration? Because there are a whole lot of broken homes with heterosexual people. Okay, I want to say someone? something. I'm, I'm sure. sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't consider it. I'm not against anything that you say, but ignorance is a part. But some have just a lack of knowledge. You know, some people just don't know, and it's just like with anything, race. You know, um, the way you were raised, you have your Aryan nations, you have your Ku Klux Klans, and these people were raised to believe that these things happen. Right, right, you know, so it's right. like you, you have like white kids, their parents and whoever raised them to say, you don't like black people. Right, and it's right, the same right. thing with, with gay and lesbian people. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are hateful people. Children are raised like this. So everything mm -hmm. is not ignorance to a certain degree. You know, you right. have to, you ha you, exactly, mm -hmm. you have to live and learn for self. Mm -hmm. And if a child is only going to know what they're taught, mm -hmm. right. until they get to a certain right. age and understanding for themselves, they're going to be who they were raised to be. No, that, it makes a, it makes, oh, I'm sorry, it makes a big difference. Right. It makes a big difference, but knowledge is understanding. And if they have the lack of knowledge, then they just don't know. Right. So I think that people have to be taught things. Right. That's the only way you're going to understand and know them. You, you know, I look at you. Uh, are, are you a lesbian? Yes, I am. Uh, now, if we were to look, if you were to walk down the street, no one would expect that you were a lesbian. Just a human being, a decent lady. Mm -hmm. See, our point today is because this thing is so taboo, and you all might agree in churches, they don't want to touch it. They don't want to talk about right. it. But, but because there's so many of them under the, the closet or in the closet still. Is that correct? So today we want to uh, let people know that you need to come out and be who you are. If this is you, then, then express it. Would you, how do you feel about that? Well, me? I, I don't have a problem with it. I, I, once again, it's just 
you're, you're taught these things. And I'm a Christian, always have been, I was raised as a very strict Christian. Praise and, the Lord. Exactly. So it's, <laughs> so, so it's to a point that I believe in what I was taught. It's when I became who I am. Right. right. You know, or right. who, what I believe in. I'm going to only accept what I choose to. It's my choice. And anything that you do in life is your choice. Like family. It's, would you rather have a child being raised in a decent home with two gay men and two gay women? Or would you have that same child raised in a home with the mother is battered? It mm. makes a big difference. But or people don't look at it right. that way. Right. They look at it as a social item. Everything is society, what is best for society. Right. That's See, a big it, it, you know, just looking at you, 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 you could really help a lot of parents in in that position, because you know they just don't they they're confused uh, about what they are and who who they are, and you know I'm I'm so glad that you're here to express the things you've you've said because it really makes a difference, and you know you're just a decent person and a great Christian, and, and that that's what we have really got to understand because most people think because you're gay or lesbian you're not a Christian God hates you, you know it's it's that's totally crazy it's wrong, and moreover um. You know, how do you feel about young people uh, that's in the lifestyle um, that's just acting crazy with this thing? How should they handle this thing? Um, you, um, I've, and I've always said it. I've said it to my partner, and I've said it to different people. One, one thing that I want to do is that I wouldn't mind working with the youth in this community, in the gay and lesbian community, uh -huh. because they need to learn and understand how to act. Because when you go to these clubs and when you go out in the streets, because they call them the streets, quote unquote, you know, I mean, they do. You, you, you're not representing you. You're representing everyone who's old. gay and who's, a, you know, who's right. a lesbian. So my thing is, I'm, I'm up in age. And so it's like when we were raised, like I said, I was raised in a Christian home. You know, we were, quote unquote, as men say now, on the down low. Because right. you respected your parents and mm. you respected who you were and where you came from. Right. I truly respect the young kids today who come out because they don't have to like hide or be somebody else right. or portray a different image than who they are. I applaud them for that. But on the other hand, when you go out there in that community and you out there in them clubs and you're fighting and you're doing this and you're doing everything negative, you're not just representing you because once again, everything is all about society. And if you're out there, you're not representing you, you're representing the whole gay and lesbian community. And right. I have a problem with that. Mm. I would not ever have a problem sitting talking to someone, you know, especially young kids to let them know, this is how you act. We were younger, it was called charm school. You were taught how to act when you went out in community yeah, and how yeah. to act in the public. And they need the same training, if that's what you want to yeah, call it. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you, because what I'm observing now is so many, many, many of them are coming out in this community, and it's almost a new world. And they really don't know the ins and outs about it, and they really need to be taught and dis uh, have proper uh, discipline in the community. How do you feel about that, co-host? Um, I pretty much just wanted to talk about as far as them coming out now, and I think what's going on, because so many people have come out, it's a whole new generation yeah. um, of gay kids out here, and a lot of them do not have guidance. So pretty much, it's the blind leading the blind. So they all just pretty much, you know, not all of them, but a lot of them out acting a fool. And I think what it goes back to, a lot of it is foundation. Um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not as uh, tenured. I mean, I'm pretty much I'm. I'm close to 30, you might as well say that. Oh, you're still young. Yeah, I'm, you, you know, I'm, I'm not a baby, but, you know. Um, but pretty much, that's how, the household I was raised in, I was, I was raised Catholic. Okay. So, went to church every day. I still go to church. Right. I have a strong foundation, and I think that plays a big part. Your spiritual, your spiritual foundation as well as your family foundation. And that plays a part, because I know when I went out, yes, I did have fun. Right. Yes, maybe a little bit too much fun than others, but... Or you know more than maybe what I should at a young age. However, I did have a lot of sense, because um, so there are some things that I did not do that a lot of the young ones these days are doing and getting into. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew still how to respect my adults. You know, my you know my parents mm -hmm. and things and such. I didn't go out to the clubs. I wasn't um, at a young age. I didn't get really involved into drugs like that you know what I mean I didn't I, it wasn't you know it wasn't like oh I'm gonna go to the club and get messed up that wasn't my mo you know I went out the club I drank I had a good time if I got drunk because I you know I'm a dog I'm a person to be real about it I did get drunk at times to have fun but 
it wasn't nothing like, oh, I'm going to go. That wasn't my MO every weekend to go out and, you know, get messed up. And, you know, it was a lot of things we did. It was a lot of responsible and adult decisions I had to make at a young age. But can I say these are problems that don't just exist in our community. Right. These are problems with regular adolescent, adolescent yeah, just, children. And right. every the time changes, you know, things. So... I didn't act like my grandmother acted. I'm not going to act like my children act. And my, and my children aren't going to act like my great-grandchildren act. The world revolve, evolves and people evolve and mm -hmm. times change. Mm -hmm. So the guidance in the youth is not just lesbians or gay, you know, right. guys. It's everybody. Um, and that can be, that's the same thing for any topic we talk about on this panel. It's, we just are trying to get people to understand we're just human yeah. we go through the same exact problems you go through we go through the same exact issues you go through we have love we don't like people we have jobs we are unemployed we're you know mothers we're single we're you know married we have the same exact issues because all in all we're just humans so any topic we talk about can be any person in the world yeah i just wanted to say because um i came out at a young age at 15. Okay. And I'll be 25 this year. Okay. Um, but when I was out there at a young age, I didn't do the things that people are doing. Like they said, it's just really about generation changing. Yeah. The same way when I came out, my mother and father was like, well, this didn't happen back in my day. It's a new generation. And like I said, it's big when it comes to family. And if you don't have that family to support, mm -hmm. these kids go elsewhere yeah. and they do destructive things because they have nobody else to turn to. Right. Because, you know, uh, I'm going to just say this. There are some young people, when their parents find out that they have been into the gay lesbian lifestyle, they want to beat the kid up, throw the kid that's out. True. And I think that's the wrong thing to but do. But that's why they act all wild and crazy when they They're get to these clubs. They feel like they can elsewhere. release so, that anyway, anger on other right. people. What can you tell parents? <laughs> Uh, how to deal with that love your kids love your kids because honestly, no matter what my no matter my situation wasn't all peaches and cream either when I came out that young my parents treated me different at one point but when they started seeing me stray away from them they was like well look maybe we need to think deeper into what's going on they are Christians so they accepted it they don't agree but they accept because I'm still their child and they still love me. Yeah. Regardless, when you had that child, you knew you would have to love that child regardless. That's right. For better or for worse, just like a marriage. That's right. That's your, that's your child regardless. Right. You need to love your kids. Regardless, talk to your child. Help them get a better understanding. And they can help you get the better, the same, you know what I mean? Right, right. Off the bat. Um, I guess from a, from a, a dif different point of view, um, I'm an educator by trade, okay. um, and I've been doing it for 15 years for the Baltimore City Public Schools, and um, and I watch my students um, change over a period of time, and um, what do you mean change? Be it in their lifestyle, okay. in their behaviors, yeah. Um, but what speaks volume is their upbringing and their parents when they come in and I see how the I'll give you an example um, let's say I have a student who yeah. has a behavior problem and he's always cussing people out and he's always fighting and he's always doing something he's always in trouble like everybody knows his name because yeah. he's always in trouble and unfortunately when that parent arrives we pretty much know why that child acts the way exactly. that he acts and it's sad that it's like that but it's true now Unfortunately, I'm in a position where I'm looked down upon on my job because of my lifestyle. You shouldn't be. I've been talked about. Sad. Sorry, babe. Hey, let me tell you something. You can put your head up because God really loves you. I've been you. talked about. Um, I've been off from work since October of 2009 because of my lifestyle. Wow. And because, she, because my boss didn't agree with it, she did any and everything to try and get me fired mm -hmm. from the school where I was. And I was very productive in this school. I had fashion shows and all kinds of, I mean, you name it. I was very involved. And because of that, they used that against me. Now, although I, I have been paid for that time, it, it's not a good feeling to know that you're discriminated right. against because of who you love. That's right. That's right. Because of and who that's you wrong. love. Because, see, one of the things that I learned very early on brought up as a Christian is that you're supposed to love 
everybody. everybody. It doesn't matter what they are or who they are. You are supposed to love everybody. So what makes it so wrong? Because I happen to love a woman. Right. You know, it, does uh, that make me a bad person? No. You know, um, does that make me less of a Christian? Does no. that mean that I love God any less? No, no. it does not. That's right. I, as a matter of fact, I may love God just a little bit more than some Absolutely. folk. You Absolutely. You know, because I need to be just a little more closer to Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Do you understand what yes. I'm saying? And when, you know, like I talked about early, earlier, I talked about, you know, my lifestyle in the, in the drug community. Mm -hmm. um, and in and, and that community came, you know, prison. I've been to prison. Mm -hmm. You know, I've done probation. I've, you name it. I've done it. Right. Prostitution. Mm -hmm. um, the lying, the stealing, you name it, I've done it. Mm -hmm. But what I had to learn was that regardless of what I had gone through, mm -hmm. who I was made me who I am. All right. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I mean that, mm -hmm. you know, because people... It's all right, it's all people right. People who judge don't matter. No. People who matter don't judge. That's right. And I believe that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I just want to encourage you, um, as a Christian man, um, I can say I love you and I respect you. And I want you to know that there are some laws that, 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 um, that, would, that protects you against folks like, and I just hope and pray that that person that ostracized you, child or grandchild, doesn't enter into the life, and, and lifestyle. I, and I pray for her. I yes. pray for her because, you know, and, because... I pray for her because it goes back to ignorance. And when and I say ignorance, meaning in the not knowing, being, you know, not having any idea what the lifestyle is about or what it means. And and I pray for her. I yeah. really do because she doesn't know she and she doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. And I pray that someday she will understand because the bottom line is, is that anyone, it could be anyone in her family who may, That's she right. may come across. Because would it, would, would she treat them the same way? Right. Because, and I'm going to tell you, what I'm seeing, um, so many women and some men, men too, are changing. And, you know, God knew this was going to happen. So, obviously, he knows everything. But guess what? He just shares his love on everybody. Right. And, and everybody is in certain things for certain reasons. I don't know why and I don't want to know why. But I tell you what's really important is to love and respect everybody. What do you, what do you have to say? I would just like to say that as far I represent the heterosexual female who is not against anything gay. Hey, hey, I'm gay too. You know, I just feel like, you know, it's, it's a lot of people out here who are supportive and who do, do support a lot of your events. Um, it's a lot of us who enter into, I guess, what um, we would name your community when we go down Charles Street and to different events going on because we do want to be there. We recognize that you're still our brothers and sisters right. in Christ at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I don't want it to be a, hey, the heterosexuals are against. No, no, no. Yeah. You have a lot of friends yeah. out here that yes. got your back 110%. Right. Right. She's exactly right because, I mean, I have a lot of straight people i mean i have a lot of friends period and i'm grateful to say that you know what i mean yeah. and grateful to know that because honestly when i did come out even though i was so young no one turned their backs on me right right even though they did not agree or like it, it took a little getting used to well hey I'm, let me just cut you i just met you and i just love you to death true indeed, uh, true you know, indeed. You're, no you're love, her, love her to love her to life don't yeah. love her to well, death to life. love that's her to right. life um yeah. but go ahead i'm sorry no but that's all i was really saying so i'm glad that you said that because i don't want anyone to think that just because we all on this panel that we have anything against the heterosexual world because I mean the same way we want to be loved or that we give y'all the love that we give y'all we just want that back in return and the same respect that we give you we would want that back as well but you know a lot of like I said a lot of people they do things you know they say one bad act will spoil the bunch mm -hmm. right. I've been turned right. away from certain clubs and places because I'm the way that I am but they have a reason because if they see that is repeatedly happening right. in that, right. that yeah, community, don't it, right? I don't blame them. Right. I don't blame them. You know I mean? right. But, but you, that goes back to what Jay said, how, you know, when you go out, you represent all of right. us. You don't just represent you. Um, and and, and, and that, that's anywhere you go. Your job, you know, a restaurant, you represent the whole community, gay, right. lesbian, and transgender. Right. You know, and it's very important that when you do that, you do it in such a way where you're respectful, you know, because they... I mean, we already have it. I mean, let's keep it real. Right. We already have it with, with this color. Right, right. And we're gay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Women. You know, so we already got, you know, like, hands down, we already got trouble. You know, so, 
you know, I mean, don't make it so hard for us. But that those are the things that make it difficult for us in our lifestyle right. when people don't know how to carry themselves in the community. But, you know. But you know, I want to sure go ahead, January. I just want to say something about as far as representing when I go out representing my community, I understand that and I get it. However, you have to take into consideration that especially the younger generation, they're going through things. I mean, when heterosexual people, when you know. Heterosexual kids go out and do whatever they do. They don't get turned away from clubs and from places. You know what I mean? They don't say, "Oh my gosh, those heterosexual guys, they <laughs> shooting up drugs." Like you know, they don't do that. So that's right. I, we're people just like everybody else. We go through what we go through. When we come out, we go through what we go through. Just like regular children go through finding themselves and whatever they want to be when they grow up. And we don't hold that against them. So then just because we're gay, when I go out, I don't think about, oh no, let me not hold my girlfriend's hand because I want, I'm representing the whole entire lesbian community and I don't want a heterosexual person look at me and say, there's, you know, there's that lesbian. I think about myself and I really don't care whether you understand or whether you agree, as long as you give me respect, because I'm always gonna be right. respectful. But I really, really, really don't care. <laughs> if you you know, if you if you like it, if you don't like it, and I and I and I don't want you to look at me and see every single lesbian person. I don't want to represent every single lesbian person. I don't know what they do. I don't know what they go through, how they think, how they feel, what they do with their girlfriend. I don't know. I know what I do, and that's it. So, you know, that's, I just wanted to say that about the, the whole representing my community. All right. I have a lady up here. She's been so quiet. What you say, sir? <laughs> <laughs> well. To comment or piggyback on what January was saying, I was watching, I think it was The Real World um, last week, and a guy, a gay guy, um, black, had went to a bar, and he was put out for kissing another guy. And that really angered me. It really angered me because um, it takes me back to, just like you guys said, in reference to the color of your skin, or discrimination against women, or discrimination against lesbians, gays, whatever the case may be, love your neighbor. You know, love everyone. It's no need to discriminate. Mm -hmm. um, it really upset me. Like, I, I really cried. I was really upset. He cried. I cried. I was very upset that we still live in a time, it's 2010, and it's still discrimination. It's sad. And, you know, it really pissed me off. So. It's funny how there's discrimination between um, gay men and the lesbian lifestyle as, as well as far as like it, it's cool to make a song called um, I Kiss the Girl right. but it's not okay yeah, to talk yeah. about what gay men do it's, mm -hmm. it's still not accepted in society and remember all of that controversy that was going on because of how he performed yeah. but but if that was Miss Kim and Trina would it have been okay right. because they're because beautiful I do, because I do believe that Britney Spears kissed Christina, I mean, Aguilera. Madonna, and they Madonna, 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 exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and, if, and you know, they glorify girls kissing out in public, but you know, if a, if a guy was to do it, it would be a totally different. Oh, well, that's that's the taboo of it all. You, but you know what? I, but what I found found out to be true is that uh, uh, most guys can accept. Uh, the lesbian females, yeah. but the guys like you know, oh, you know, and uh, wait a minute, and let me piggyback huh? on that. <laughs> and it's oh, okay. not so much guys can guys don't all aren't always kind to the lesbian community. Right. It's if you look like a woman. Right. As soon as your right. as soon as your dress changes over and now you your your pants are sagging and you and your hair is corn rolled or you have a regular, then the guys don't really like you anymore. But if you went back in that house with your same regular and put on some booty shorts or something, they'd be like, oh well I mean so I mean it's right and wrong and everything. It's good and bad and everything and every lesbian and every gay man is good and bad you're not gonna get the same person and each one of us we're all very different people we all come from very different backgrounds we all dress differently right. we all wear our hair differently just like you the heterosexual you are, you are. male yes i am yes and so you don't you don't yeah. look like this heterosexual male and you don't think like that heterosexual male and i mean that's the same thing we're all we're, we all have different views we all have different educational backgrounds we all have different occupations right we all have different lifestyles i mean we all have something different that we contribute to this world and that's what life the world different people make the world go around because right. so. check this out a lot of my buddies i meet they come up to me real quiet yeah man i like your show with the lesbians because like my cousin my little sister and they whispering because they don't know how to deal with it right. so i say to my friends out there um 
you have to accept, man. I mean, they, they are human beings. Uh, you, can, you don't know what's on the inside of them, but you have to respect them for who they are. And um, yeah, that's just the way it is. And, you know, it's growing. So we have to understand and just join. We can be friends because the, most of the uh, lesbians I've met just find people there, business folks, educated people. Uh, they can probably help you get a job. So let's respect them. So when you see a lesbian out there hugging, holding hand for another lesbian like this, just speak to them. Say, "How y'all doing?" It's okay, because um, they want to be. Because you know, I, I honestly, what I, I'm gonna tell you what I did um, uh, about three months ago. I just started speaking to, especially like the, you know, like the lesbian that look dumb. Okay, I said, "How you doing?" They were like, "Okay, fine. How you doing?" Just, they they want to be spoken to. They feel right. people. They, they have your little sisters. Too. They your That's nieces. Right. You, you right. follow me? So you know again. And and guess who loved them more than you? God. That's right. How you feel about that? Pretty good. Um, I just wanted to say I think at the end of the day. You can talk. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. But anyway, at the end of the day, I think just the heterosexual community needs to pretty much embrace it because gays and lesbians aren't going anywhere. It's no. Here. The community is Y'all here. Yeah. So, and what I've done, go ahead. You yeah, love to talk January. Growing. You can tell she was born the first month of the year. Uh. Come on, January. <laughs> Not only are we not going anywhere, but we, we work where you work, we live where you live, yes. we're going to have children, we're going to buy houses, we're going to get married, we're going to do all of these things. Whether you like it or not, whether you accept it or not, it's not like you know it's not like we're gonna wake up and go, you know what? Not gay anymore. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get me a husband because society doesn't like it. Right. So you, you <laughs> that's not gonna happen because most happen. guys think if I get her, I'm gonna tell no, Holmes. It ain't gonna, gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. They they are who they are. You gotta respect them. Uh, they won't be your girl inside. You can forget that. They are happy with who they are. And the reality and, of it is, we only know how to be us. We don't know how to be you. So. Right. And you know, I, I I have to say this. I just found you all so unique. So different, and but you know what? That's what they said about black people. You know, yeah. so that's what they said. Oh my God, you guys are so unique. You're so creative. You're so talented. Yes, you guys like, are. We, you know, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, but, we are. Like but, we but, are, but we're just as creative as you are. So yeah. it's like I don't, I don't want you to be like you guys. No, I'm you guys too. Yeah, you, I'm my a, family. That's like, right. Yeah, yeah. And I'm her too, and I'm whoever because unless you see me with my partner. You don't. If you see me with my children walking down the street, I don't. You would never. I, I would never expect. I don't have that. a sign that says, "Hey, I'm a lesbian." No. So you're gonna think I'm just an average mother going to work with her children, and until I say, "Hey," until you see me go, "This is this is my partner," then you like. Now, just five minutes ago, we were having a lovely right. conversation. We were talking about politics. Right, right. We were right. talking about where we go to church, and now when I say, "Oh, but this is my partner," you like, "Oh well, um, it, what happened?" Right. See, this is what how happened? I feel about it. Nobody's perfect. Right. We're all different. However, we all have something in common. And if everybody honestly used the love that was built in them, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be going through this. We would not be sitting on this panel right now. Right. And um, back to, I wanted to talk about the whole. Um, you forgot. Come on forgot. now, TP. But. I mean, it's us all to it. Like, give me my respect, and I'm gonna give you on. Like, people talk to me out the blue all the time. Right. I don't know what it is. I don't be knowing people from. You Adam got Lee, a big sign on your face that says no, oh, you love everybody. That's, that's what it is. That's what I wanted to go back. <laughs> and we love to you back. About, because when you said that, how people judge black people. I was in Macy's not that long ago, and this um, Caucasian lady or whatever. She didn't say hi to me, even though she was the customer service rep. <laughs> I said good afternoon. And she looked at me and was like, you must have a great mom. Number one, she stereotyped me because I was black, probably. And then she said, a great mom. I said, no, I have great parents. Right. Like I, Even though nothing was perfect in my household, don't get it twisted. However, they both raised me. You know what I mean? So it's, people need to just stop judging, stop stereotyping. Get to know a person before you can say you don't like them. Right, I right. tell them all of that all the time when I perform. Don't hate me if you don't know me, because if you knew me, you would love me. <laughs> Off the bat. I love you, dog. <laughs> a wonderful person. Hey, look, I tell you, we're going to take a, a commercial break. We'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. Taboo. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to It's On Talk Show, and today's topic is taboo. Look at these wonderful ladies we have up on the panel today. Somebody say yay! Uh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're, we're back, and... Um, uh, we had some some wonderful conversation at uh, at the break. Uh, I want to start uh, back with uh, you. Um, I was sharing with the group how um, one of the words that I didn't hear was diversity. Um, what is diversity? Diversity is different. 
um, we all uh, come from a diversified community. It doesn't matter where your community is, be it upper class, lower class, middle class, gay, whatever, straight. It doesn't matter. We're all different in some kind of way. God made us all different. We all have different fingerprints for a reason. Right. You know, and that was because so that, you know, we can be identified as individuals. If we all had the same handprint or fingerprints, then we would all be the same. And God made us different for a reason. But I think I think I heard Lee say earlier, you know, because because God made us different, that's what makes the world go round. Um, I, I believe that life would just be born and all the same if all of us thought the same, did the same, felt the same. You know, what would life be like? You know what? Um, this might, a lot of folks might not agree with what I'm about to say, but I, I almost want to say, say oh, I'm going to say it. Right. Say it. God developed or created this group of people because a lot of folks that's in the church really don't love God with the things that they do. But you all, I mean, I've never heard a group of people proclaim the love of God so much. I, I, I'll be honest. That's my personal opinion, and um, I stand by that. I mean, while I just know where my help come from. I know that without him, nothing is possible. I know that I'm clean because of God. I know that I love because of God. I know that I am because of God. You know, so everything that I do and everything that I am to that I am now and that I plan to be is only because of God. And I mean, I read my word. You yeah, know, yeah. Um, I'm not always in church every Sunday. No, and I ain't praising the God, praising the Lord. Um, I'm on the choir. I, I go when I, I, I'm not really committed because uh, I just had some bad experiences. But yeah, that doesn't yeah. take away the love I have well, for my higher power. Really the, the church is in your heart. I can have church in my bedroom by myself all Absolutely. alone. And it's about praise and worship because that's what church is about. And I think a lot of folks, you know, get it confused with, you know, the church is just a building where God wants his people to come together. Right. But the church and the word is within you. And it's what you do with it and how you live your life, you know, that matters. It's not where you, I could sit in church all day long and be the biggest hypocrite mm -hmm. and heathen there is. Well, let me just share this with you. Um, I, 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 there's a show coming really soon um, titled uh, Something Going to Church. But what's going on? Someone told me, it came to me, called the show. Some pastors are, as young men are coming into churches, what they're doing is manipulating these young fellows and actually screwing them. Um, and then allow these, then allow them to be their adjutants or uh, armor bearers, and even giving some other churches. So that's another subject. But that's some stuff that what I what I'm finding out the gay and lesbian community they don't do stuff like that. It's the ones that are, are portraying to be the, those heterosexual folks. But then they're so sneaky well, and conniving. The church that I go to, the pastors are heterosexual, mm -hmm. and they believe in the homosexual lifestyle. It's in. Washington DC. Okay. Um, it's called First Covenant Baptist Ch Baptist Church. Okay. They believe in the homosexual lifestyle, but they believe in it just as they do with the heterosexual lifestyle. You have to be married if you're going to live together. Yeah. If you're going to adopt children, you yeah. have to be married. It has to be and order. I love them for that. Because the bottom line is is what they said. It doesn't matter who you love, it's how you love. That's and let right. me say this, I'm sorry. Um, well, go ahead, speak. I don't want we I don't want us to come across like a group of people that are perfect and we just love Christian, we love going to church and we don't do any wrong mm -hmm. because that's, that's not right. what we're trying to just, you know, sell to the world like homosexuals are just God loving people. There's some bad ass homosexual people. <laughs> you know, there are some terrible homosexual people that that rape people and murder people and you know use drugs and whatever and uh, whatever it is so i don't want to come across the word like oh we're just straight laced we don't do any wrong we don't curse we don't smoke we do all of that but that's what makes us just like you is that Amen. we do all of those things and i don't ever i'm not in church every week lord knows i'm not but <laughs> I'm very spiritual, so I may not go to a church like Nicole, and I may not, you know, walk around and worship and, and fellowship with other people, but that doesn't make me any different than someone else. So I don't want to come across that way. We smoke weed like everybody else. I don't personally, but we smoke weed like everybody else. We drink, we party, we dance, but we also go to work. We also are getting our master's degrees, and we're also doing uh, charity work. We're also doing those things, so I don't want to come across like, we're just straight laced and we you know we trying to sell you on getting with us mm -hmm. we're just human right right i just want to be just, loved like everybody else that's all i mean i pretty much just think 
that with that, just piggybacking off of Malika, just like she said earlier, it pretty much has to do with the community as a whole and us being able to identify with everyone and just not the gay community. Pretty much a lot of our spiritual foundations comes from personal testimony. Mm -hmm. So our individual connect connections with God or the church or religion, whatever your religious perspective is, comes from personal testimony. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, necessarily that, you know, like, oh, we're gay and we're, you know, oh, God loving because we want it so bad because yeah. people are trying to create that disconnect with us. Right, it's right. no, it, through personal testimony, we have gained this relationship with God and therefore this is where I am as far as my religion or my spiritual views or my connection. Can I, you know? can I also say that I don't want to feel like we're bashing the church either because I go to a strong church. Mm -hmm. It's very small. But the hearts of the people are very big. Yeah. And they will welcome anybody, regardless That's of how beautiful. you look, how you smell, the way that you're dressed. People come in all the time are being helped when they walk through the door. My grandfather is the pastor, okay. St. Abraham Baptist Church on uh, North and McCullough, right by the car wash. And, like, no, really, anytime I can tell anybody, because... The ones that we shoot down are the ones that you know that your word wasn't about to be about homosexuals when I walk through the door. Right, but because now that I'm here, you want to make your word about homosexuals. Right. That's where we turn our backs on them. Because it's like, you knew you wasn't going to talk about this. And then the whole time you preach and you want to be looking at me. And then you want to call me up for individual prayer. <laughs> it don't work like that. But we will respect the church more when they respect us more. And that's yeah. why I do get right. the respect when I walk in my church and I can send anyone else there and they will gain that same respect. Yeah. Can yeah. I say something? Sure. It's um, The word respect, it goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it can't go either way. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it, it, with heterosexuals, children, adults, whoever, you, you're taught respect once again. Everything is taught. So, it's, you know, so my thing is, if you have a, a, a straight, 16 year old boy and he can be bad as whatever you know what i mean you know miss such and such she got the baddest kids you know whatever whatever you know what i mean but if you have the neighbor three doors down and her son is flamboyant yeah, yeah. you know mm -hmm. it's just so outcast you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it's like it's something wrong mm -hmm. respect again but it's, it's more or less taught to to people you know you, like I'm going to use Nikki as an example, you know, her boss, whatever, you know, fired her, you or, you know, well, went through a situation, I'm sorry, but I've been blessed to have jobs, but my thing is, I know in the jobs that I've, I've held, they're professional jobs, yeah. and it's no way in the world, in my position, that I could go to work dressed like this, right, or right. I could go to work dressed like you, mm -hmm. it wouldn't work in my field. It would never work because yeah. image is everything. Absolutely. But that's that's with heterosexuals as well. Oh, of course. You and, have, okay. And, and just, you, you have to accept right. that. But my, and I have accepted it. It mm -hmm. is what it is. Mm -hmm. That's just a part of life. But once again, you know. I guess it's it, how you carry it. It's all on how you carry yourself. You earn respect. It's right. not given to you. Yes. No one's going to give it to you. You have to earn your mm -hmm. respect. And we, I come back again with these youth. You know, if you want it. Be who you are. And like I said, I'm glad they can come out, you know, in the open as young as they can. But when you do it, do it with positivity. That's right. all I'm asking. But you want to respond to that? No, I just wanted to um, say something because I do understand your opinion about, you know, dressing like us. However, I mean, there's been plenty of times that I come in there slicker than most of the guys that work there and more professional. To, from my shoes to my socks, you know what I mean? And not saying that that was a problem, you know, but a lot of people, when they look at the dominant female, they think that we're trying to be boys or, yeah, and that, or yeah. we just comfortable. Okay. If I wanted to dress like a girl, that's what I would do, regardless of whether I was the dominant or the feminine female in the relationship. If yeah. that's what I want to do, then that's what I'm going to do. I'm but I'm not saying that. I'm sorry. I'm not <laughs> saying that. What I'm saying is like... Even if you have two, I'm sorry, even if you have two men, rather they're two straight men, you know, there's some good jobs. You can't have dreadlocks. That's true. Or you can't have firefighters. 
it's only been years that they can have dreadlocks mm -hmm. or you couldn't have facial hair. It's just, that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. Either you accept it or you don't. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with it. You know, but you have to, you have to adhere to some things in society. Once again, right. it's still right. in right. all how you carry yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. There are just some feels, you know, I, 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 I wear dress clothes 99.99% of the yeah. time. That's just okay. who, but that's just who just I am. Just who you are. Exactly. You know what I mean? But my profession also had me this way. Right, right. You know I do understand. I mean? But I do know I'm, I'm out there in the public a lot. Right, right. So if I'm out there in the public, this image. once again, I said again, I'm not representing me. Absolutely. I'm representing someone else. And you have to understand that. Okay. And this is, um, this is actually perfect because that's a perfect segue into the next uh, topic as far as occupations. Um, pretty much in the community, we have been tabooed to be known as pretty much gay people, especially doms have CO jobs, security, uh -huh. bounces, um, pretty much just hard, a coach, coach at the school, yeah. like gym coach. Yeah. yeah, the gym teacher, you know, I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I know my gym teacher was gay, but, okay. <laughs> but, but pretty much, you know, I also know that I had a few other teachers that were actually in the life, however, they taught me other subjects, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's important to know those things. Um, and I know a lot of us here are in um, corporate environments as well as other type of environments as far as occupations and we contribute to society just like everybody else. Right. So, I mean, if we could, I guess, speak a little bit on that as far as, I guess, maybe if you're comfortable with talking about your occupation and, you know, what you're doing just so other people can know that we're doing things. Because I know in my occupation, pretty much, I work at a hospital. I work at a children's hospital. Okay. You know, um, I pretty much Monday through Friday, well, Monday through Thursday, I'm in my khakis on my dress pants. I'll put on my button down. In my previous place of employment before the hospital, I would wear a necktie or a bow tie because I felt a little comfortable there. Now at the hospital, I wear my button down and my best, but I won't have on a necktie or a bow tie. Okay. Just and that's honestly just because the structure of the hospital, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, yeah. You know this, is how, this is how you know this is how I, exactly I'm respecting the environment pretty much just like she said. Um, how I'm still comfortable. I'm still able to wear my khakis. I can put my chucks on with my khakis and walk around the hospital, play with the children because it, it is a hospital for ch sick children. Right. So I get to roll the kids around or I get to you know play best with anything with the children inside the hospital, but I'm me and I'm comfortable. What I will say is though, however, before I actually started employment there for the interview, I'm not even gonna lie, I, I was me, but I did wear my hair down. I okay. had my hair down. I had my lip gloss on. I ain't even gonna lie. You know what I mean? I ain't even gonna lie. Cause sometimes, I mean, I'm, I, I mean, I am, I am. And I felt like honestly, because I, previously I had, I had locks. I previously had locks and I had to cut them off. You know what I mean? I yeah. cut them off, and I realized, honestly, when I cut them off, a lot more opportunities came my right. way. And see, that's I don't want to say that it was because I was gay or, no, no, but you, you know what I mean? That's, but that's I want to say it was my hair. Because so it's, it images everything. And, right. and so you can really help a lot of people uh, out there who, you know, dress, you know, the, the, right. the, the, the braids and all. Mm -hmm. So you have to use common sense now. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you got to know when, when, to, when to go and when to flow. Go ahead. Yeah. I think it goes back to the misconception or lack of knowledge that, you know, gays and lesbians only have this type of job, whether it be coaching or certain things like that, um, or uneducated. Again, we're just like you. I'm a senior at Morgan State University. I have three classes left until I graduate. Right. <laughs> Woo! I do work in corporate America. I work very hard, again, just like you. We are the same. We're no different. Um, you know, we have good jobs. We go to school. We're doing big things in corporate America. All right. So, you know, again, it's just a misconception, a lack of knowledge that, you know, they only have, or gays and lesbians, transgenders only have this type of work or only do these type of things. Okay, we, we, we're coming to the end, so let's make some. I, I just want to share this quote. Share this. Um, Tyler, I read a passage on Facebook the other day that Tyler Perry wrote. Mm -hmm. And um, he said that he just finished working on this movie called Colored Girls. Uh -huh. And um, he said that he was very tired, so he wanted to take a vaca vacation. So he took a few days and went to Hawaii with his friend. And they were climbing this mountain. Uh -huh. And he said as he's climbing this mountain, he's looking at his feet. He's gripping his hiking boots in the mountain. And um, he's taking small steps. He's taking long steps. Uh -huh. However, you know, he had to make sure that his feet was planted so that he wouldn't fall. And he said no matter how many valleys they went down in, mm -hmm. he still they still went higher. And so when they got to a certain peak of this valley, 
um, he said, Woo, we finally reached the top. And uh -huh. his friend said, Uh-uh, we got further to go. Let's go. So he said he had to put his man pants on and keep it hiking because his friend was a girl. And he didn't want to look like, you know, he was a yeah. punk. He said, <laughs> but he was tired. He was out of breath. The altitude was taking his breath away. And he just wanted to sit down and give up. He said, but he didn't. He kept climbing. Right. He kept climbing. He said, but the higher they went, the more valleys they had to go down into. Mm -hmm. And so he said, when they finally got to the top, his friend said to him, now turn around, this is the best part. And when he turned around, he could see the C part. And he said it was better than a picture that, could, that Picasso could paint. Wow. The point that he was trying to make is that no matter what you go through, no matter who you are, it's all in the climb. You, know, you have to plant your hiking boots and you have to do whatever it, you have to do to get to the top. And this is a man who was homeless, living in his yes, car with right. absolutely nothing. And so, it, so, you know, if you don't have a job, if you're being discriminated against, if you're not being loved, if you don't have a family, it's in the climb. Just stay in the climb. Just grip your hiking boots, you know, and no, no matter how hard it is, just don't give up. You know, in, in my recovery, I use that analogy. Yeah. I just plant my hiking boots and I keep it moving and it's all in the climb. Okay, one more, one and, and I know we get close to the end, but keep it an open mind. And yes. it, you know, you have to understand that sometimes when people quote unquote hate on you and not is because the street hate. I mean, because they have problems with she's gay. I don't like her or I don't want her around me because he's gay. She's gay. You have to always sometimes keep in mind to think because they're fighting their own demons. Right. You know what I mean? You know, and, and that can be a big issue with, with your with your supervisor or manager or whoever, yeah, she, you know, because she might they, like you. Yeah. Or yeah, that too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or she could or she could be or she could be fighting it herself. Right, right, true. You never know what's going on in her household. That's right. It could be right. her it could be her son, her daughter, her niece, That's whoever. True. You yeah. don't know it could be her herself. And she can't come out. So she's upset because she can't and somebody can. Right. That makes a big difference. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to piggyback off of something though couple topics ago but I didn't get a chance to I just wanted to let people know that really now in this day and age like I said we have more gay people coming out day right. after day so you need to pretty much not shun your kids and tell them you know to ostracize these other kids right. you need to kind of right. embrace them and I teach my nephews that now they're getting a little bit older we hope that you're not gay but we don't want anybody to have to go through this where we live every day right. but at the same time you need to kind of embrace it and just not be mean to people especially like kids coming out hey listen um this has been an awesome show, ladies. I just want to thank you all for coming on, sharing all your ideas. And I know that uh, TV audience learned a lot today. Most of all, they learned a little more about love. And, 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 you know, one thing I want to say, do not discriminate against gay people. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. They are people just like you. They're your friends, your family members. One, one thing you can do is just love them and respect them. And, again, we do want to thank you. So Taboo has been awesome. Ladies, I just want to thank you so much. Um, thank check, you. check us out. Uh, if, you like, uh, if you have a t uh, subject uh, you'd like to talk about, give us a call at 443-846-6223. If, if you'd like to come out the closet, uh, come on the show. Really, I mean, a lot of people really want to come out. So this is your opportunity. Give us a call. We're gonna, next month we're going to have a show coming out of the closet. So if you want to come to the closet and announce who you are, give us a call at 443-846-6223. Peace, and I'm out. See y'all. It's been a taboo day. Peace.